All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure to get your bearing out of here. The shoulder of this bearing is gonna go down. So the black portion of the bearing is gonna go down. You should be able to see this lip sticking up. So what we're gonna do first, put it on there like that. It should fit snug down in. And then you're gonna grab your rotating housing. All right, now you're gonna wanna grab your rotating housing. So make sure that there's two seals, little plastic seals, Teflon seals. Make sure those are there. And just grab your housing. Make sure to check it for any debris or, or thick, uh, like pieces of wood, because I know it was on the skid, so. This, anything just break clean off and blow it off with compressed air and this gear wants to spline right into that gear pack down there so as we lower it we just twist, twist it a little bit and you'll hear it bottom out it'll drop by itself yep then take your gasket for your front support plate on the front support you got to make sure all three seals are there intact and also this plastic washer has to be in there as well you can do the same thing Vaseline assembly grease or anything like that will work to glue that on there I glue that on in place make sure the tabs are lined up and it's setting flush on the on the front support put a little this assembly just grease these guys not not jump out of the way when we're putting them down there Forget about these two. Yep. Two more uh, plastic Teflon seals on the uh, ground sleeve, and then your orange O ring on the pump housing itself. The bolt holes lined up, and just drop it into place. Then you're going to have your other gasket for the converter housing to the support plate. There we go. Okay, now that your gasket's in place, you checked all your uh, seal rings, O-rings, take the converter housing. Maybe a decent idea would be uh, a little bit more of this here. A little assembly grease on the O-ring. So that so doesn't want to jump out of the way there and cut it, yeah. Set that right on, line it up. Got four exterior bolts, two on this side. Got two on this side. Now inside of the converter housing, all of the bolt holes with a cutout. The inner bolts have to have a rubber seal on them. So those are the interior bolts. Those go on the inside uh, holes with the cutouts. We have um, these ones here. Okay, so two of the bolts, the long bolts have brass washers on them. Those are gonna go on the very bottom two holes. Those are just prone to leaks, so we throw a copper washer on them to make sure they don't. So put all your bolts in place. Uh, you can zip them down, uh, but just make sure to use a torque wrench. Well, but, what's happening to this unit? Oh, it's getting torn down anyways, right? Yeah. Now you're just going to want to take your torque wrench, go through all the bolts. You can mark them with a paint marker if you want to for all the ones you've done already, but you got to do all of them. Just torque all of them down. 38 to 45 foot pounds to spec on these. And they got to be pretty accurate, so make sure to, to that you get all of them. So yeah, you just make a little yellow paint dot on the top of the bolt after you've torqued them all. And uh, then we're going to put the converter on. Now, after you got the bolts all torqued down to spec, um, you take a rag and some brake clean and make sure to clean out this uh, area inside the bell of any oil or anything like that that got inside of there. Um, otherwise, it'll look like a front seal leak when they go to install it. So you can hit it with brake clean, compressed air, use a rag, just get it cleaned out somehow, as much oil out of there as possible. All right, let's throw that on. Um, we're gonna grab the torque converter right uh, pretty much by the, the nose of it, right by the pilot. 
And unless you're wearing gloves, you should probably use a rag on that pilot just in case there's any burrs and we don't want you to cut your hand. So you just slide it over. Slide it over the input shaft and then spin it by the lugs and kind of shake it. And it's gonna go in and wants to spline three times but it's completely splined in. You're gonna feel it bottom out. And this shoulder here to the end of the lug gonna have just a little less than an inch. It's gonna be almost flush with the opening. Then you'll know it's splined in all the way. And you can put your uh, shipping brackets back on there as well and make sure that they look just like every other unit that comes in on a pallet. So if you got any questions, just give me a shout and I'll be able to help you out with it.